Hello, my name is Niket Patel. I'm an interventional cardiologist in London. Um, I often get asked, how does COVID-19 infection affect the heart? Uh, so lots of patients ask this question and it's, a, it's an important question. Um, and we've learned a huge amount uh, during this last uh, year, year and a half of the pandemic about the virus and about how it affects body systems, including the heart. Um, actually, there's a huge amount still to learn about this and about the long-term consequences of the infection. So to get to it, how, how does COVID-19 infection affect the heart? Well, there are a number of ways the virus affects it. The virus is a, the viral infection is, a, is an inflammatory condition, uh, a condition that um, predisposes to, uh, that causes uh, inflammation of several body organs, including the heart. When uh, inflammation of the heart occurs, this is called myocarditis. It can be picked up by uh, various mechanisms, blood testing, ECG, and echocardiography. Um, and we know that this does occur in patients that have the infection. And in fact, there are signs of myocarditis when patients are scanned after they've recovered from COVID-19 infection, particularly COVID-19 infection that is severe, requiring hospital admission. Another important way that COVID-19 affects the heart is that it, as an inflammatory condition, we know that it is causing a prothrombotic state. What I mean by that is that the body um, during the infection has a higher propensity of developing clots, both within the veins and in the arteries. When, the, when clots affect the arteries um, and patients have heart attacks, it is often found that actually the heart attacks are more severe because of the increased clot burden found in the heart arteries. And treatment of the heart attack can be quite challenging. It can mean that um, there is more uh, work that needs to happen in the heart arteries to get rid of the clot, more medications that might be required in order to treat the clot. And there can be long-term consequences if, um, if, if it has not been possible to manage the clot burden during um, a heart attack in patients that have severe COVID-19 infection. So, you know, there are so we know that there are um, a number of ways that COVID-19 infection affects the heart um, and um, we're still learning yet more. Another question that patients ask frequently is, can COVID-19 infection cause long-term damage to the heart? This is, this is an uh, an exquisite question, a question that is the focus of quite intense research currently. We um, have scanned patients um, who have recovered from a serious COVID-19 infection and been discharged, having had um, a minor um, uh, rise in an enzyme in the blood called troponin that signifies a small amount of heart damage. Now, when patients are discharged well, they were then asked by um, our, our team to come back for a scan of their heart using a cardiac MRI. During this, these scans, we found that a significant proportion of patients had, um, a, had changes in the heart that signified that they had had myocarditis, inflammation of the heart muscle, and or had changes in the heart suggesting that small heart attacks or uh, a reduction in blood flow to the heart muscle had occurred. Now, the, the um, effect on the heart muscle uh, was minimal. The heart pumping function was found to be relatively preserved in these patients. Um, so we have found that there are changes in the heart caused by the infection, the changes certainly in the short term uh, in these patients that have recovered from COVID-19 infection uh, appears to be small in the majority of patients and in the minority of patients, there are significant changes that require treatment. And, but, but the long-term outcomes of these changes are yet to be investigated thoroughly and 
as I, as I say, a focus of intense research currently. So another question that patients often ask me is, I have high blood pressure. How does this affect my uh, risk of COVID-19 infection? We know that high blood pressure amongst a group of other conditions and states can increase your risk of severe COVID-19 infection. We're re well rehearsed in listing those um, other comorbidities or other conditions that can increase your risk of a severe infection. Um, and amongst those includes high blood pressure, age, diabetes. One thing to say about all of these conditions is that it is important that you see your physician in order to optimize the treatment of these conditions so that they are well treated. Um, we hope that this then reduces um, the risk of developing a severe infection should you catch COVID-19. So um, yes, high blood pressure does increase the risk of severe uh, infection. And um, a good way of trying to manage that risk would be to ensure that you have optimized treatment for it. An important question that patients often ask is that um, I have a heart condition, what can I do to decrease my risk of a COVID-19 infection? This is, a, this is a, a very important question. There are lots of patients that have heart artery disease, um, have heart failure, have other conditions that affect the heart like diabetes and high blood pressure. Now, uh, all of these therapy, or all of these um, conditions require uh, optimization. So we know that patients that have poorly controlled blood pressure, poorly controlled diabetes, um, or have heart failure that is um, uh, not optimized, they can have a higher risk of developing a uh, severe complication from COVID-19 infection. Um, and so actually what's important here is to ensure that um, patients uh, catch up with their physicians to ensure that they have uh, optimal treatment for their heart and other conditions. Um, so if COVID-19 infection was to occur, then there would be a slightly lower risk of developing um, or a significantly lower risk of developing a significant complication. The other important facet to this uh, answer is that, of course, uh, no matter what one does to optimize treatment for these conditions, there is still a, a, a burning risk uh, associated with catching COVID-19 of a severe infection, one that would be associated with complications um, if you already have um, a heart condition. And um, the important message is that we need to take good precautions in order to reduce our risk of being exposed to the virus in the first place. So it's important that patients with significant heart disease um, take um, governmental and societal advice uh, and their physician's advice on, on what measures to take in order to reduce the risk of catching the infection. So um, it goes back to um, simple public health messages about um, reducing risk of transmission.